Greetings, this is August 6. We are looking at the webcam pointed north at Spolmachin. This is just north of Vernon, and if we jump a little bit south to Kalamelka, still looking north, same time, uh, sun is coming through. Uh, there are clouds and potential haze in the distance. If we jump across the lake northwest, this is the cam at Falkland. It does come back periodically, so it's a good one to check. And if we go to the Monte Creek area, we are able to look at a cam pointed south. Uh, we can see what could be potential smoke clouds in the distance. Uh, it's clear at this point, so this tells me that the smoke is flowing to the east. It's in a northeasterly direction from the fire zone at the White Rock Lake fire. These are the cams from Dry BC. The link is in the description below. It's a great resource to kind of tour around the province and get a ground view. We're looking at the Big Bar Cam from about a half an hour ago. Uh, this is looking north towards 100 Mile House. The Flat Lake Fire Zone would be on the left-hand side of the screen. There looks to be some mist and haze in the distance. Uh, we'll take a look at the forecast on Windy. Uh, it's coming from the southwest at 2 kilometers an hour, whereas down near the White Rock Lake fire zone, the winds are coming from the southwest at 19 kilometers an hour, and there can be gusts on top of that. Wind gusts are supposed to peak out today at about 36 kilometers an hour, around 5 p.m. Uh, they'll wane overnight and then pick up again from the southwest tomorrow, uh, going up to as much as 40 kilometers an hour in the wind gusts. Then early on Sunday morning, uh, the winds will start shifting, coming from the west, and then they'll turn and start coming from the northwest. does look like there might be precipitation on Sunday. The situation up at the Flat Lake fire zone has been a bit different. Uh, the winds have been coming from the northwest. There's been precipitation. They've had rain. Uh, there is a bit of shifting in the wind direction coming from the west periodically. Then tomorrow, uh, there could be a shift. The wind comes from the south in the afternoon, a bit of sunshine. Then it turns right around again, comes back from the northwest, and more rain on Sunday. And when we look at the infrared on NASA's firm system, you'll be able to see there's been change in the Flat Lake area. We're going first to the White Rock Lake fire zone. We're looking at a dramatic change overnight. This is recent data gathered by the MODIS system. And now the VIIRS Suomi comes on, and then the NOAA, and finally the Aqua system. When the VIIRS NOAA came on, we could see a cluster at the bottom right-hand side of the screen. Uh, this showed up right along the Okanagan Lake shore on the western side of Okanagan Lake. This is the eastern flank of the fire and the closest points to Falkland. The infrared in the lower portion of the screen, I believe that's about 15 kilometers southwest of Falkland, according to the scale in the lower left-hand side. We're zooming into the north flank of the fire. This is over Monte Lake. Westwold is near the center of the screen, and the infrared extends west of Westwold up Highway 97 in a northwesterly direction. If we zoom in, keep in mind that these infrared squares do not mean that the square is being consumed by fire. It means that heat was detected somewhere within that square. These heat detections can be off position and they can be obscured by smoke and cloud. Looking at the Monte Lake area, I am seeing still green pockets of vegetation. Uh, the Infrared is scattered, but there do appear to be diagonal controlled signatures. The expansion in a northeastern direction from Monte Lake looks to be 10 to 11 kilometers. And when we zoom out, we can see how the fire progression has made its way northeast and kind of fanned out uh, one section heading north and the other section heading to the east. 
I would like to look at the topographical data for this on the Canadian Wildland Fire Information System, mainly to see if the alignment of these mountains and valleys was a factor with those southwest winds. We're going to move now to the Tremont Creek Fire. This is east of Ashcroft and Cache Creek. It's moved north of Tunkwa Lake and Tunkwa Provincial Park. Here we're zooming in and this is a good example to show how off uh, infrared can be. Tunkwa Lake is in the center of the screen and it does appear that infrared has approached the lake shore and to the north and to the northeast in forested blocks. Now keep in mind this doesn't mean that these squares are being consumed by fire. It just means that heat was detected somewhere within this square. However, if you look in the center of Tunkwa Lake, there are three VIIRS hotspots in the lake. So infrared can be off position. As the satellite orbits, it gathers the data at an angle and then makes a translation to uh, synchronize this with what we see on the mapping system. This is important if you are going to these infrared sites and zooming into a local area. A current ground report is vital to understand what's happening. Do check the resource links below and verify the information with multiple sources. And you'll need the situation report from BC Wildfire. The link is in the description below. We've moved a little bit northeast, north of Highway 1, north of the Thompson River. This is the Sparks Lake fire, and I'm seeing clusters of hotspots still around the Chris Creek area and west of the Bonaparte Provincial Park. There's a bit of activity to the east of High Heum and Loon Lake. There's approximately half a dozen random hotspots to the east of Young Lake. Here we're over top of the Flat Lake Fire Zone. This is from yesterday, August 5th. We're going to roll into today, see if there was an effect from that precipitation. And there it is, no infrared visible on this update. So that was uh, three systems, four systems, no visible infrared. We're zooming out and looking at the area around Kamloops. This is infrared from yesterday and now today. There's a definite reduction in the infrared visible in the north and western portion that's on the left hand side of the screen and the rest of the active fire zones appear to have moved eastward and in a northeasterly direction. We've moved down Highway 5, this is a Coquihalla near Brookmere and the fire zone does appear to have moved north and eastward and crossed Highway 5 as displayed in infrared. So if you're traveling in the area, please do check the link below for Drive BC. Uh, zoom into your area on their mapping system. You'll want to know if there are any restrictions on access. Likewise, if you're traveling Highway 3, Crow's Nest, south of Princeton, Manning Park, East Gate. Moving eastward to the Oliver Osuius area, we're looking east of Oliver. Still clusters that have moved up onto the Okanagan Plateau. They're in forested blocks. Now keep in mind we're seeing four sets of data. So each satellite passes overhead and grabs its information and some of this information can be duplicated. We've moved slightly north. This is east of Okanagan Falls. We can see Skaha Lake on the left hand side of the screen. Uh, that fire has moved up to the Okanagan Plateau. We're seeing a string of clusters that move up the hillside and there's quite a lot of activity still at the top. We have to watch that in case southwest winds decide to push this further northeast. Get the ground report and check out the Canadian Wildland Fire Information System if you're in some of these areas. We've moved up the Okanagan Valley. I'm zooming into the area around the Okanagan Connector west of West Bank. There's a couple of hot spots that have popped up just north of the road. And in the North Okanagan, looking at Maple Lake, Sugar Lake, just left of center on the screen, uh, Revelstoke's about the middle. Seeing some activity there, it does appear to be moving in a northeastern direction, but I don't know if that's outside the existing perimeter. So again, this is where those ground reports are crucial. This is the Shushwap now. 
only seeing one hot spot to the east of Sycamus. Uh, a lot of activity to the east of Adams Lake. That's in the Momich Lakes area and to the east of the North Seymour Arm in the Shuswap. We've moved south to the southern interior of the province. We can see Arrow Lakes left a center. Nelson is almost uh, center of the fire that's north of it around Windlaw. And then we can see on the eastern side of Kootenay Lake around Boswell, Destiny Bay, there are hot spots there still. The fire near Winlaw, just right of center of the screen, does appear to have stretched out in uh, almost a constellation of uh, hot spots. It it's going from the southwest to the northeast. We'll need a comparison with an existing perimeter to see if there's expansion. And we'll take a look at the Lytton fire. Spence's Bridge is at the top of the screen. Lytton is just left of center. There are hot spots still appearing within the perimeter of the fire, and that southeastern flank still has a lot of activity. There does appear to be controlled infrared signatures there, that diagonal patterning. And finally, we'll go back to the Flat Lake Fire. This is looking at infrared from today, so it may be obscured by cloud. We can see on Windy there is an area of low wind volatility. Uh, that's where clouds have settled in. However, just to the south, over the White Rock Lake area, winds are moving quite briskly over 20 kilometers an hour, and the wind direction is looks consistently from the southwest until Sunday when it may turn, come from the northwest, and hopefully bring some precipitation. Just going back in time, this is the 1st of August over the White Rock Lake fire zone. Uh, there was some cloud cover that rolled in on the second then on the third uh, the fire reappeared it's starting to fan out one section going to the north towards monty lake the other heading eastward towards okanagan lake and finally here we are today so please be very careful if you're venturing out uh, conditions are volatile and we're looking at these strong southwest winds for the next 24 to 36 hours and then there could be a shift coming from the northwest and hopefully bringing rain to some of these fire zones that have been so parched Please be safe out there. Keep tabs on these fire zones, uh, what your access routes are, and what's happening between you and the fire line, where the wind is blowing. Keep your nose to the breeze.